We're here at Gringo Jackson, Manchester, to hear about an independent TV festival that may be coming to town next summer, actually next fall, if everything works out correctly. The organizer is going to give us a little presentation about it and hopefully interest some of the members of the business community in it. Let's go find out what's going on. Philip Gilpin Jr. has been organizing the festival, which has been running for 11 years in Los Angeles and Dover, Vermont. But the festival, which last year drew about 750 television producers, writers, actors, and others during its five-day run, has outgrown Dover. A new location, like Manchester, could take the event to the next level. In that first year, we were figuring out how to hold a major international television festival in a town that has one movie theater. So what we do is we rent these huge tents and go out and get these AV screens, and we actually set up 8,000 square foot movie theaters on what was just an old tennis court. And we brought in the best new TV pilots from around the world. And so that was 2013, and every year since, it's just grown and grown and grown. Um, this year, when Jen was there, it's definitely been the, the height of what the festival has been in its, in its 11 years. And the challenge is getting people to leave their jobs on the Fox lot uh, at the Bones set on a Thursday afternoon to fly across the country to go to a place they've never heard of for two days just to see a couple of new television pilots is a challenge. But the romanticism of Vermont is what's attracting them. So, Philip, can you tell us again what attracted you to Manchester in the, big, in the first place, other than it was a larger town than Dover? And has a coffee shop or two, <laughs> um, but uh, is it just the fact that uh, your your event has outgrown over and you need to come to a larger venue? Is that basically what it comes down to? There are a lot of things that people who attend the festival say that oh, next year you should add this, next year you should add this. And some of those things were coffee shops, food trucks, um, some more stores, kind of more of a village atmosphere. So naturally, if we were to build Dover out to what everybody says that they want to be perfectly you know, a, a perfect festival location would look like well, it's already built here. Okay. Um, and, and there's there's a lot more um, connection to the arts up here. It seems like a lot more people have friends that are in the industry or related to the arts or are donors to the arts or care about the arts. Um, and there's just you know there's all the potentials with the brands. There's, it, there's it's that it's that step from being a small town startup event mm -hmm. to becoming a global international event. And to do that, you need a place that supports it on a global international level. Um, we asked Dover to, to be that place. And, and, and there's some hesitation just because of the nature of the size of that town. So obviously a place like this is. Wherever we decide to take home, hopefully here, uh, it's not going to be a five-day event. Manchester will be the benefit of millions of dollars of year-round PR and articles uh, about how it's the new home of television. And, and just to put it in perspective, there are thousands of film festivals around the world. I'm sure we've all been to a few. There are three television festivals, three. And there's one festival that focuses exclusively on the independently produced pilots, and that's us. Now, would you be looking for any direct support from the municipality, from the town itself, to help get this thing off the ground, or is it just a case of you're, you're hoping that local businesses would offer coupons or discounts or incentives of one kind or another? Uh, we can do this here without needing anything from the town. We're capable of, we're self-sustaining, we can bring in the festival and hold it for five days and not require anything. It's just that it'll stay 700, 800 people, they won't you know, they won't probably won't spend as much because things will be more expensive than if they had discounts or coupons and things. And mm -hmm. Or if we get the support from the town, well, whether, when I say the town, it doesn't necessarily mean the select board, doesn't mean, I just mean whether it's private donors, whether it's business owners chipping oh, in. Okay. Whatever the source is, um, sky's the limit. You know, okay. if we're able to, the more money we're able to raise, the more money we're able to bring back. Yeah. By the way, ITV Fest is a 501c3 nonprofit. Our numbers are public, so this is not a big deal to, to be sharing, and so feel free to share with people. Um, right here on the bottom, you'll see this little chart, about five or six pages in, and that's been our revenue growth and our expenses. We run this festival right now on about $170,000 a year, and we brought in approximately a million dollars of revenue for the Dover businesses uh, a couple weeks ago over the course of the five days. Any particular reason why it must be in October or the second half of October? I mean, could it not be 
like in the summertime or, or something yeah, like there, there, so the way that the industry calendar works there are only so many open spaces within the television and film industry where you can have a major event like this and get people's participation one of those slots is that middle to end of October time which just also happens to be peak foliage season in Vermont um, the only other real time we could do it would probably be sometime around early April or so uh, summers are tricky because a lot of people are on vacations, a lot of people are shooting, there's a lot of other festivals in the summer. So um, after doing this for five years, you look at the calendar of world events and you know we, we can't do end of September because that's when the UN General Assembly is and the UN is one of our partners. Um, we can't do it the middle of September because that's when the Emmys are and a lot of our people are TV. So there's a, global considerations that come in and October happens to be one of the open slots. So Sounds like a potentially great event that could come to Manchester next summer, and we'll know better in a couple of weeks. For the GNAT TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.